Okay, I'm totally, I can't put into words, I'm over the moon. All I've tried for to get Mr. Burnham, I call him Mr. now, to give me an appointment to help the homeless has come through. I had a message earlier on my mobile and my landline to come up here at four o'clock. I, mean, I wrote to him, I said, Andy, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. I got your message from my landline and mobile and I will attend the meeting as per your instructions. Of course, four o'clock. I'm over the moon. If my proposal is voted on by a majority of your 641 councillors, we'll make it work, Andy, and there will be no more homelessness. I'm so glad, I really am, I had faith in you and didn't start contacting the media with anti burnham messages. I knew you'd come to me. Anyhow, I'll see you soon, my taxes arrived. Three quarters of an hour and homelessness will be eradicated forever and ever in Manchester. Who knows, as I said to him, it might go that he, in four years time, goes down south again, takes over from Starmer, who's not doing too well, and becomes Prime Minister, like he wanted to do when Corbyn beat him. We'll see. I wish him luck with it, but he's invited me up here at four o'clock to sign the agreement to end homelessness in Greater Manchester. You couldn't have a better mayor than that that sticks to his word. Three quarters of now's time, you'll see me on film with Mr. Burnham as he signs on the dotted line. Thank you very much. It's ironic, all these padlocks are locked up and we are unlocking homelessness. Well, here we are in Manchester, strolling round. Before we meet Mr. Burnham, very happy I am, over the moon. I feel like singing, I'm so happy, not just for me, but for the homeless, we're gonna do something. I knew he'd meet me and he is going to. What a wonderful mayor, wonderful man. Meeting me at four o'clock. There's another, just over half an hour to go. Really chuffed about it all. <laughs> My wife has allowed me in the central Manchester, which is very exciting. As, you know, as against the locality of localness. Up here it seems to be all happening. Yeah. I'm not going to touch the clothing here, the same as you would not want somebody to open your wardrobe door and go through your own private clothing. But here, obviously, is a homeless person's total possessions, a bag, a few clothes, a bit of sleeping gear, a bit of old chocolate. It breaks my heart because this is how I live myself. This is somebody's private wardrobe. This is all they've got in the world. They've got nothing else and this is where they leave it. That's the world of the homeless. This lot will be on hangers, on hangers in a wardrobe, in a warm room in the winter, in a clean room, with a toilet to go to the toilet properly, with toilet paper, with a toothbrush, with a sink, and a civilised life where this gentleman or lady can lock their cubicle up and begin to come back in life. And here we go to meet Mr. Burnham. Very excited, I've calmed down a little bit, but it's so good that we're seeing him at four o'clock. Second floor, here we go. Hold on, hold on, it's closed. Hold on. Hello? Oh no, it's right, it's temporary closed. 
You go round the corner. That's all right. I had a fright for a minute. I thought it was another Andy couldn't make it, but it's all okay, we're round the corner. Oh, I did have a fright. I don't believe it. Andy! Andy Barnum! I don't believe it. No, there's nobody there. There's nobody there. Well, who signs this then? Oh, look. That's fortuitous, I think. And probably, so is that. We got, I'm going back round the front. There must be another bell round there that we can ring. I'm sure there is. No, it's closed. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I really believed when I got the message from that I was coming up here for an appointment to get this signed by Andy Burnham. I was so, I, I don't know what to say. I got, I'm lost for words. I don't know whether they've done this on purpose to make me look a fool. I don't know, I don't know. And the homeless that we've seen this afternoon and this gentleman down here with his sleeping arrangement, the trolley, the supermarket trolley full of clothes. And look, on this second floor, I won't swear, but it's where that Ponce operates from. I thought he was meeting me. I believed it was true at five at four o'clock. I gave him till five o'clock. I'm angry, but I'm quietly angry. To bring me up here, I've been up all night because of the police calling at my home address. I'm thinking they're gonna smash the door in and try and pin something on me. And I was in a rehabilitation center 52 years ago and Scotland Yard called and arrested me for organized crime. That's what I suffered last night, reliving it all. Then I got the elation of coming up here for to help with the homeless. And this is what I'm greeted with. Locked doors, locked up. It's not humiliating me, it's letting down the homeless. We came here for a purpose and it's irrelevant really whether the purpose, he's obviously let us down and tried to humiliate me, but we know it's Saturday and I've got to go home to go to. The film crew here have got homes to go to. And tomorrow for us it's Sunday and we've got our different plans. And then comes Bank Holiday Monday and we've got different plans. But for the homeless, it doesn't matter whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Friday, because they're homeless with nothing to be late for, nothing to be early for.